Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tell Your Story. I'm your host, Todd Nisloni, and each episode, I look to bring you a different guest who has encouraged, inspired, or challenged me in one way or another, and bring them on to share some of their story in hopes that it inspires you to tell some of yours. If you checked out my episode right before this with Ashley Ogal, you may have noticed that I randomly disappeared at the end. Throughout the episode, we were talking about a storm and Wi-Fi and all this, and actually, the last 20 seconds of the interview, we had a tornado warning and I had to disconnect really quick and run and hide under the stairs. So oh, Ashley finished up the episode for me and was fantastic. So definitely go and check out her conversation. But today I get to chat with Matt Dunbar. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Kind of tell everybody who you are. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. My name is Matt Dunbar. I am currently the eighth grade administrator at Benjamin Franklin Middle School in Rocky Mount, Virginia. Uh, next year, I actually will be transitioning to the sixth grade position. We, we, we don't loop, um, but I, I'm just moving to the sixth grade for a different opportunity. Uh, this is just finished up my eighth year in education. I, I taught for five years world history and uh, government at Franklin County High School, the school that I graduated from. So I'm, I'm a big community person, love the area that I live. And part of part of my um, why every single day is trying to just uh, let other people see how wonderful the area we live in can be yeah. and, and try to, to put it into a positive light. So uh, just a, a guy just working in the area that I grew up, uh, grew up in. So cool. I love it. Well, I can't wait to chat today, Matt. So, you know, with every guest, I love to start from the very beginning. So when you were a kid, what did you dream you were going to be like? Was educator even on that list? Uh, not initially. Um, <laughs> I So <laughs> we had a tape recorder at my house and my best friend and I lived across the street and we would record different things. We would act like we were newscasters. We would uh, act like we were um, some crime solvers. So we would literally tape record everything and then just play it back for us to hear. But in doing that, uh, when we were acting like we were uh, on the news, I kind of said, you know what, it would be really cool to be a weatherman. So for a number of years, I thought that I was going to be a weatherman. Um, I realized, I think probably in middle school, that not super great at science. And, and then, you know, everybody kind of goes through that period where everybody wants to be a doctor um, <laughs> at, at some point in their life. And then going back to the not great at science piece and the not great really at math piece, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, probably not. Uh, I, I had an aunt uh, and uncle, both very influential in my life. Uh, both were educators. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just saw the enjoyment that they had in it, the, the fulfillment. Yeah. And, and this is a this education is a career like no other. And I could see how happy they were. So um, I, I decided once I went to college that I wanted to uh, go into the education field. And I, I, what's funny is my first semester at, or my first year after uh, my freshman year of college, I actually did an internship at an insurance company. And it was an opportunity that my dad got for me. And it basically is the same thing every single day. And I said, absolutely not. There's no way that I can do the same thing every single day in education, no matter if I was teaching the same world history lesson to three different classes, it was different every single day, no matter what. Uh, so I, I just, uh, from, from weatherman to taping things to maybe wanting to be a doctor, but education um, definitely found a home with that. I love that. And so, you know, at that point when you realize education's in your path, you you obviously ended up in secondary. Was that always a goal of yours or at some point did you consider elementary too? Uh, yes, it, it, was, <laughs> it was always secondary. There was a, there was a time. So I, I was a, uh, I, I ended up, ended up transferring from the school that I was at to the school that I finished with. And there was some point during, I guess, my super junior year that I was like, oh, maybe I should go elementary. But that would require a lot more classes. So probably not. Uh, but secondary, I, 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 at that time, I had done a lot with our, as far as our church youth group was gone, it was considered or was going. And I knew that um, I just connected well, e even at, at, even at 2021 with the, the 14, 15 year old age group. So um, I, I, I spent time obviously teaching at the secondary level. And then um my first administrative, I left the high school that I was teaching and went to a different division. And I worked there for a year. Absolutely, positively loved it. 
um, high school administrative experience is, is, is different. I mean, the, 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 the kids are, I'm not a very big guy and they were mostly all bigger than me. So, um, <laughs> after, after that experience, uh, my wife and I had a, a baby in January of 2018 and I was driving about 50 minutes to work and 50 minutes back and uh, a job opened at the middle school, which is located a mile away from my house. And I was like, I've got to hop into that still secondary, still working with around the same group of kids. Yeah. And I know that's for me. I love that. And so, you know, but I always am interested in when others, when it clicks with them, that administration might be in their path. And so what was that kind of turning point for you where you thought, you know, I think this is my next step? So um, like I, I referred to my uncle and aunt earlier that my, my uncle was an administrator within the division and he, he actually, he, he was my business teacher in high school, my golf coach. And he, uh, he is only about 12 years older than me. So there's, there's not a huge age difference and it's more of a, a brotherly relationship than, than he's my uncle and I'm his nephew. Uh, but I, I saw just because of how connected I was to him the enjoyment that he had, the way that he worked with his staff, the way that he worked with his students. And, and I said, I feel like I bring that personality to the classroom. I feel like I am making uh, the, um, the students are enjoying their time with me. The, the staff works well with me. Um, at the time, I was a third year teacher going into an admin program at Virginia Tech. So that, that's always looked at a little bit strange. Why are they doing it so soon? Uh, but for me, I didn't have kids kids yet, and I knew that uh, the timing fit. Um, and and at, initially, my thought was, I want to go ahead and get my admin degree, and then I love teaching. I want to I want to kind of sit on it and continue down the teaching path because I really really do enjoy that. And prior to uh, actually getting into the program, my superintendent uh, had to sign off on me going into the program, and and he called me to his office, and I was nervous. Obviously, I'm a third year. Yeah having to go sit in front of the superintendent and he he said um you basically you have all the skills and the tools necessary to do this job incredibly well what i want you he said what are your plans and i kind of told him the same thing that i told you and he said i want to caution you to sit on the degree he, he said just like new teachers are graduating every year from uh, teacher prep programs and have the best instructional practices there will be cohorts that graduate after yours and he said, you need to put yourself out there. So uh, I kind of uh, heeded his, his advice. Unfortunately, that took me from the division that I was in to a different division, but I found my way back after a wonderful experience, um, a wonderful experience in the other division. But I, I, I think in, in my head, I just enjoyed so much working with kids and had such a, a passion for not the content, but just the way that I was making kids feel, I, I, I guess I wanted to take that to a, to a larger scale. Um, yeah. So uh, that's that's kind of my admin thought process and journey. Well, you know, I, I love that your superintendent poured into you in that way, because I think that that was not only a great example of leadership, because I remember when, you know, my former principal, when I was a teacher, what she told me, and she said, I'm doing my job correctly. If I make you the most marketable teacher out there, she said, even if that means I leave, I lose you because I've made you so marketable. That's how I know I've done my job. And so for your superintendent to do that, I mean, I think that was just a great, a great way to grow up others mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. really build them up. So that's such a cool story. Well, you know, Matt, when you reflect back on your own life and your own path and the joys, the successes, the trials, everything like that, what is something that has, that has taken place in your path that you feel like is really instrumental into creating the man we see today? So um, I, I talked about the uh, five-year college experience instead of the four-year college experience. And uh, the, the fifth year was actually a, a blessing. Um, I have uh, I went to elementary school, middle school, high school and college with the uh, wonderful lady that I'm married to. Um, and we, we were friends all throughout the entire experience, how many ever years that was. And that that super senior year was her true senior year. And that allowed us to uh, reconnect and uh, form the relationship that we have today. Uh, she is a second grade teacher. Um, basically, when we pull out of our road, she turns right and I turn left and she has a four minute ride and I have a four minute ride. 
Um, so uh, her impact on me, I, I can't, it, I'm not trying to be overly gushy or, or throw out any cliches. Um, my, my Twitter bi bio says, uh, husband to the kind of teacher we all want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, the heart that she has, uh, the way that she loves her kids, the way that parents speak about her five, six, seven years after she's had their student is, it's incredible. So a lot of what I'm doing as an administrator is through the lens of having a, a wife who is an educator, knowing the grind that she puts in every single day, knowing the hours that she's working and then what she's doing when she comes home. Uh, I, I just, I, I looked at that and say, if she's working that hard, you better bet that I'm going to bust my tail to work equally as hard. Um, so I, I just, it, it's such a blessing being married to someone else who's in the field um, and who is just daily giving it every single ounce of energy that they have. I love that so much, Matt. And, you know, so my next question then revolves around that idea of, you know, she goes and works at a school all day and comes home. You go and work at a school all day and come home. How do you two, you know, disconnect from that world of education? Because, you know, when you have a spouse who's not in the same career, they come home and you can at least talk about something other than education. I can see much of your conversation stemming around education. So how do you all disconnect and find that balance? We had this conversation last night, actually. Um, <laughs> we, we, we were just kind of, uh, she's actually been on maternity leave. We had a son on April the 9th. So um, we, we thank you very much. We, uh, we've had a, a lot of time to have conversations that do pertain to education and don't pertain to education. Um, I, I think part of, uh, we, we just enjoy spending time together. Um, at, people say all the time that their spouse is their best friend, but her being my best friend is what brought us together. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether we are exercising together, walking, we, we've been walking all over the place recently once she was cleared to start exercising again. We've been walking all throughout our town, um, just spending time outside. Uh, we have a two and a half year old daughter and then obviously we have about a seven week old son at this point in time. But a lot of the conversation pertains to them um, just as it would for any set of new parents or parents in general. Uh, the, the cool thing is, and, and she, she's a big supporter and she, uh, I literally like a number one fan. So she does enjoy hearing the stories and I do enjoy hearing her stories because they're so vastly different. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Even, even in middle school, working with eighth graders, they're, they're to the age where they're doing, uh, I guess some adult things and her kids are, her kids are doing things that I'm like sitting there going, if I was an elementary school principal, how on earth? Would I respond to what the kid did? So you know, uh, I was thinking. I bet there are many times where she's like, "Please tell me stories about middle school because it reminds me why I'm in elementary." And you're like, "Please tell me mm -hmm. elementary stories because it reminds me why I'm in middle school." <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, Matt, one thing that I, you know, really learned through being an administrator and through connecting through social media, like you do as well, is that very easily you are bombarded by the opinions of others and you see lots of different varieties of things going on all the time. And so with all the things that you run into, all the things that you see, all the comments that may be made, how do you not allow doubt or comparison to seep into your own life? How do you kind of keep that at bay? So that that's kind of uh, this self doubt is, is, is uh, has probably had a huge impact on me. I, I remember just being in middle school, being in high school, not having near the confidence that I, I should have had. Right. Um, and I, I think one of the ways that I that I attempt to keep away self doubt is by being engaged with the teachers, being engaged with the students and being engaged with the parents. I've already used the word grind, but it, it, it really, it, it's what comes back to me over and over again. If you are grinding day in and day out and those that you're around see you doing that, it would be hard for you to have moments of self-doubt uh, because I know the quality of work that I'm doing. I, I know that I am trying my hardest every single day to make the lives of the, the teachers easier and the, just make the lives of the students more full. 
Right. And I, I think that has allowed me to kind of push away some of the self-doubt. I do. I, I had a tweet one time and it ended up, it, it's like my top tweet ever, I guess. Um, but most of it was really, really positive. Lots and lots of positive um, interactions with it. And then all of a sudden someone threw out something that was negative. And, and that is hard. Negativity for for edu Twitter or whatever. That's the weirdest thing because 95 or 99% of it is positive. And then somebody hits you with a haymaker of, well, maybe that wasn't the best idea. And I'm like, whoa, where did this come from? So that, <laughs> that takes a lot of internalizing. And then I kind of re reflect back to, well, this is the Twitter sphere. I'm living out here though. And I, and I know the quality of what I'm doing out here. And the teachers know the quality, the students know the quality and the parents know the quality. Um, so I, I just, I, I go back to that word grind every single time. If, if you're grinding day in and day out, uh, you can, you can fight that self doubt. Well, you know, and I love what you said there. I think it really comes down to you knowing yourself and knowing mm -hmm. and, and being um, grounded in the work that you're doing so that when somebody from behind a computer screen has their opinion and has not met you or spent time in the work that you're doing, you can, you can more easily brush it off. So mm -hmm. I, I love that advice. Well, you know, Matt, thinking about the students that you've worked with and when they come back to see you in 10 or 15 years, what do you hope they say about you? That I made it, this experience different. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that is my goal every single day. I want education to be different. I want specifically education in the division that I live in to be different. Um, that, that is, that's what I want that they know that's that whatever was beating in my chest made me act, think, speak, interact in a different way. Right. Um, and that that has been my why as a teacher. That's my why now as an administrator and whatever the future may hold. I, I, I want them to say there was something different about him. And because there was something different about him, he made me feel differently or he caused teachers to feel differently. He caused them to interact differently. Um, and and I, every day when I'm walking through the hall, I'm trying to just bring such a level of positivity. And, and a lot of the people that I'm sure you interview, they're, they're the same way. Uh, they, they know that they're modeling the behaviors that they want other people to have. And if they're constantly doing that, then it's going to, it's going to go to the staff. They're not, it's, it's contagious. And then the kids are going to feel something different. And, and, and that's what I'm looking for. It, education doesn't have to be the same old, same old. Um, it, I want I want more personality. Yeah, I love that. Well, Matt, one question that I always love to end all these conversations on is I believe as people, there are so many things that we hold close to who we are and, and our heart. And so for anybody who might be listening or watching today, if they were to walk away with one thing, what would your one thing be for them? My one thing um, would be the importance of a steady, gonna use it again, grind. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use the word steady because I think to my time at uh, William Fleming, which was my first assistant principal position, um, there was a young lady, uh, we, we had had a fight in the hallway, uh, everybody was elevated. She was late to class, she wasn't involved in the fight, and I, um, I had a tone with her that I never have with anyone. Right. And she didn't speak to me for a couple of days. And then finally I asked her what was up. And she said, I've never seen that side of you before. She said, I've known every single day that I was going to get the same Mr. Dunbar day in, day out, mm -hmm. interaction in, interaction out. And I didn't get it that day. And that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Just right. it, as, as an administrator, as a teacher, being steady and calm is uh, and just getting the same version of you each day is huge. And then putting in the work necessary so that others around you see you engaged at the same pace that they're going. Um, that no, no disconnect from the, from the teacher to the, to the admin level. They know that you're daily doing your best to help them, uh, to communicate with them, uh, to include them. Uh, in, in what's going on around your school. So uh, be steady, grind hard. 
I love that. Well, Matt, I admire the work you're doing so much and was super pumped to get to chat with you today. So thank you so much for spending some time with me on Tell Your Story. Thank you. Uh, awesome opportunity. Keep up the good work. And thank you, everybody, for listening or watching another episode of Tell Your Story. Remember, you can check out past episodes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever you get your stuff, it's there. I hope today's conversation with Matt has encouraged you to get out there and tell your story because every story matters.